The first piece in Schumann's Valsenen is Eintritt, an entrance, plain and simple. It sets the tone for the whole collection with its easygoing and unassuming character. And as always with Schumann, it's slightly obsessed with the rhythmical feature. In this case, jumpy, almost marching eighth notes in the right hand. Check it out. So the melody is in the left hand and the right hand has this walking rhythm, a little bit groovy, but then the melody shifts to the right hand. We get this really nice counterpoint with the bass and the melody. Only two voices. Now there's a very tricky thing with the meter here. It's in 4-4, four, four, of course, but when we get to here... So uh, the meter feels like it's displaced. It feels like it's proper 4-4 four, four bars, but they're starting on the third beat the whole time. One, 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 and so on. So this is very common in Schumann and in Brahms. And sometimes there is a point of hearing the beat differently, or sometimes the point is the ambiguity of it, to have it floating between <laughs> the, the meter, the beats. But here I really don't get it, uh, because it feels so clearly, because you have all these other kinds of musical signifiers and accents that specifies where a beat is more important. So here we have the, these kind of uh, accents almost. And like the rhythm changes uh, here now on this beat, it changes to quarter notes. And here is another accent, the forte on that beat. So after this, it gets a bit more ambiguous actually towards the end of the section. Now when we get to the repeat, it's a fun thing because we get this vamp now an extra time of, of uh, half a bar. just adding to this kind of uncertainty, ambiguity of, of the meter. Uh, but if you listen to the recording of a great pianist, Maria Joao Pires, when she gets to this, she just skips that half a bar and goes directly to the start, like this. And you can speculate if it's uh, a mistake or not. Uh, I wouldn't assume it's an oversight, that rather it's a conscious decision, uh, just very free with the score. But I love that version because it makes it slightly more stable. Uh, but that's not what's written, it's written extra. Anyway, let's do the harmony. We're firmly in B flat major tonic. Going to G minor temporarily, E flat back to B flat major, uh, then C, we get the C major, C7 to F. So now we're modulating, because C is going away from B flat major, we're modulating to F. Again, C dominant cadence to F. And F is the dominant in B flat major, so it's modulating to the dominant, very standard stuff. There's one final detail I want to notice here. It's just in the beginning, uh, the melody in the left hand. This is called a horn call or horn fifth. Actually, there are three notes in horn fifth. If you take a scale and start on the root and the top voice goes, just scale note one, two, three. And then the bottom voice, you take the same note, B flat, and you play an arpeggio starting on the third. So the D is the third, and you play that part of the arpeggio, and you play those two voices together. This is horn fifth. It's only one fifth, but it's called horn fifth. And this is like a special symbol in music. 
Uh, here it's only two of the three parts of it, but it's enough to make it clear, this movement. And I'm going to read two passages by Charles Rosen, who's written The Romantic Generation, great book of all the big romantic composers. He's got a whole chapter on mountains and song cycles. The horn calls are symbols of memory, or more exactly, of distance, absence and regret. The sound of the horn in the depths of the woods is one of the few pieces of romantic iconography to find a firm foothold in music. And about this very start of Eintritt, the horn call unobtrusively suggested in the left hand is the traditional romantic evocation of the forest, the distant echoing sound that stands for memory. These forest scenes are filled with sentimental nostalgia. And just to take one final example of this, Beethoven's famous sonata Les Adieux in E flat major, it starts with exactly this type of horn call going down. It's going to the minor here, but this is the horn call. Uh, and he's even specified here, Leberwall, farewell. I'm gonna miss you, my friend, because this sonata is about like a, an absence of a friend. That's for another video, maybe in the future. Eintritt, we're still only in the background, but... But it's there. Okay, if we finally move on after the repeat now, we get some kind of new episode. So it's immediately this uncertainty it's like we've entered into the woods, but we don't recognize everything anymore. It's slightly new territory. So it's diminished chord. Just a diminished. And a half diminished. But we have the same motif in the right hand. So we recognize something. And it's kind of developed and expanded. It's the same rhythm all the time, but the intervals changes. And we get this syncopation in the left hand. This amazing dissonance that comes from the syncopation. Because the left hand stays on this B. And result. But then we get rid of the syncopation. It's pianissimo. Now the left hand answers the right with the same motif, but again, different contour. And we're kind of finding the way back, F7 going to B flat. And here we basically get a repeat of the main theme, back on the trail where we know where we are. A little bit of variation here. So nice, a little bit groovy, but very elegant still. And now it takes a new turn, so it's a little bit varied in the end here. To, to G minor and then... So B flat 7 points forward. end up in C minor and this is basically a big development section continues and there's a lot of things happening still the same kind of motif but now different territory and here is the motif now it's developed into like a question and C minor to F9, open, and then a response in the high register. It's like the birds chiming in. And now the bass in the left hand really feels it and tries to solo. And the right hand likes it and picks it up. 
increasing tension now with chromatic suspensions. Uh, this. But we have F in the, as a pedal point in the bass all the time. And finally, reach this chord, it's a G7, F in the bass. Again, pointing forward, away from where we think uh, the home key of B flat. A second time repeated, insisting. But it goes straight home to B flat major. There's nothing more adventurous this time. Uh, this kicks off the final uh, return of the theme, exactly the same as in the beginning now, for like two bars. And then it has more of a closing character. So it's just E flat to B flat. That's the plagal cadence, always has this security and reassuring character to it. Final nice arabesque as an ornamentation to a B flat major chord. And chords putting an end to the movement. So all in all, a lovely piece. It's great for training balance between the hands because both the melody and accompaniment kind of move between the hands all the time. Thanks for watching. Special shout out to my Patreon sponsors, JJ Martini, A Nikka, and L Holland.